upon entering the space, uh, you, you kind of hear a, a blur of sounds, a wash of different sounds uh, uh, that aren't easily or immediately identifiable. As you approach the hole, which is uh, you know, probably the first thing a, a visitor sees as they walk in, what they'll hear first is, is sound emitting from the hole. They'll hear a, uh, a didgeridoo performed by a, one of the Aboriginal musicians we've, we've collaborated with. Uh, what then happens is it becomes a part of the system we've created, which is uh, the microphone picking up the sounds of the earth. Um, what I always want to remind people is we're not using any digital effects to process any of these sounds that were recorded. It's all being filtered through the earth, literally, I mean, through the sand. In addition to that, uh, there's other sounds mixed in with that, into that, uh, into that motion in the room, and that would be more singing from Matthew and the yeah, other musician, Clarence Slocky. And if you listen carefully, we haven't, we haven't explained this to many people, but you'll even hear the sound of the cutting of the floor. And the third feedback loop that's happening in the, uh, in the space is any visitor that comes in and uh, their interaction, you know, they're walking in the space and their interaction will be picked up by the, the microphone as well. You know, there's one feedback loop is a Western scientific worldview which has um, created scarcities. And then at the same time, um, they have created an industry. They created industry that have created the scarcities. They've also created industry to seek to solve the problems that living with scarcities creates. Um, the indigenous feedback loop is um, connected to the, to the earth. It's the knowledge system that predates the Western system <coughs> yeah. that is on the land, creating the scarcities on that land. They typically operate parallel, but they're not intersecting, meaning that indigenous people, indigenous knowledge systems are not being brought into uh, the processes that the Western scientific institutions uh, have or engaged in to solve those problems. So the third feedback loop is the process, it's, it's what connects the two together. That's the interventionist process. It connects all the visitors, all the people in the room, whether they're indigenous or not indigenous, they all interrupt momentarily those feedback loops and interject themselves into it. So that's a very, very important process to this. It's not just sound. This is a consensual space that has been built over a period of over a hundred years. A lot of capital has been leveraged to create that. A lot of people of industries on the boards that have built that. There are a lot of people who have collected artifacts and images and to create this narrative of what a culture is in Australia. And if you look at the larger debate in Australia, there's a discussion about what is Australian culture? What is truly Australian? So that institution, which is a stage for public discourse, is mediating all of that. So we had an opportunity to go into that space mm -hmm. to cut a hole in the very foundation of not only the discourse, but of the physical presence of it. Right. And remove it and set it up as a trophy and force people to look in the land within that you know, nexus of discourse and, and think about you know, the Aboriginal voice, Aboriginal identity, and Aboriginal culture and the Aboriginal knowledge system.